Brian, do you know the reason why we put on masks in the day? Well, apart from giving it a white egg to run them so it sets the picture off, it also um, gives a consistent theme. So all the paintings look the same. And the other reason would be with Bob. Actually, the tape has come to be useful in about three or four different ways. The main one for me is just before an event finishes. You have, I mean, you've been painting to music or you've been flying through this thing and you're standing so close to it all the time and everybody's painting on it. And you have to get a perception as to whether you can step into it or not. And as soon as you take off the white, it looks like a window. And if you look like you're climbing through that window or past that point, then it's got the balance and the depth of what an artscape is. It's almost three dimensional, they're moving. And then you step back a bit further and you can tell if your color balance is out. You know, sometimes it looks like a, a dance floor is falling right off the side. It might be the way you've got the perspective going, um, which I use a curved to fisheye perspective most of the time. And yet it's the right way, but you might have a blob of color, pink, some kids put there or something. So instead of removing the pink, you just find somewhere else to balance the color so that it brings all the way back around. Now, the most important point for the investor is that because we paint so prolifically at events, they get, it's canvas only, we try and save on the stretcher frames, not on cost, but just on material and um, transportation and things. But it now gives the chance for the guy who's stretching the canvas to actually make a mistake while stretching it and not damage the canvas by putting the clamps on it to pull it. So you can actually frame the complete edge. Or, if you want, because it's canvas only, you can actually wrap it around the edges because this dimension of the white tape now makes it so that if you shrink your image in those proportions, it works directly towards the center that got you in there, into that reality. When the, the scene to be captured is a realism scene, in other words, you need trees in the background, you need roads, you need all those things that are unnecessary to, to make it believable or deceive the eye in its imagery. But what you need is the brightness of light. And the best way to do that is large structures that we've built right throughout all my artscapes. You'll actually see most of them have been masked off. They actually take up the area where that used to be. So rather than paint it over the top as though we were living in harmony, I completely cut it out and then mask it off. That then also allows the public to choose their brightest colour and put it in there. It's the world they live in. It's the world we live in. You know, so um, not only do they add colour to the background and the natural aspect of one that has a landscape feel, they also put in their own structures of what we've created. Like if we're going to, say, create an umbrella, you know, you sort of, you've got your umbrella shape and you've got to make sure you don't cut the canvas. So you've got your umbrella shape. And then you'll just join it to give yourself the right arc. Sometimes you miss, sometimes you hit. So there you go, the public would paint all over this madly and I would just peel that off at the end <laughs> and when they see the white they could paint in the colours of their own umbrella so it keeps the structure and dimension. A load of crap really but that's exactly it what I use it for. <laughs>